photons orbit the black hole. The reason it's dark inside is because that's where the event horizon is. All the light that would normally come to you has been crossing the event horizon before it can come to you. So you're really seeing the evidence of the event horizon. That's why that dark patch is there. Uh, the entire solar system would fit well within that dark patch. The, the ring is, is at least three times the size of our it? solar system. And this is six and a half billion solar masses. This is the strongest evidence for the existence of supermassive black holes, period. Because 6.5 billion solar masses is in that region, the size of our solar system. I love that Messier, so it's called M87 because Messier, the astronomer, was cataloging a bunch of annoying things in the sky that you should absolutely not bother looking at. Um, and they were all called M1, M2, M3, et cetera. And this is M87. And his point was they're not comets, so they're not interesting. And I love that you could not possibly foresee um, one of the really great discoveries made in this century, which is to actually have a look at a black hole. And, um, and the beauty, of course, is that the black hole is actually dark, right? So we're really seeing nothing. And I just want to make a bit of a shift here. So I, I do want to say, I came to the National Press Club in DC for the announcement. And um, I had this moment of feeling like all the stuff you described, we have, what did you say, 200? I'm sure it's even more than that. Astronomers collaborating on this internationally around the globe. I felt like we were like the telescopes, you know, around the globe, like looking together at this image of a black hole. And there's something really beautiful about scientific collaboration that I felt was demonstrated that day. And also, um, the gift of knowledge and also the sense of how transcendent and unifying science is in that sense. It's, it happened to all of us at the same time and we all look together you know, at this image. Um, also, are we falling into that thing? <laughs> no, this is, thankfully, is this that is far enough fate? away that we don't have to worry about it. Um, but I wanna come back to something that you said. I, so we, we looked at all the newspaper covers the next day, and it turned out that most every newspaper in the world had this on the front cover above the fold, and we estimate that four and a half billion people saw it. That's a lot of people. And I do this taxi test where I get into a taxi and I'll say, hey, do you know about the black hole? And, and people usually say, yeah, the black hole, I remember seeing that, right? So it's about 100%, you know, <laughs> give or take. Um, and occasionally they will try to explain to me how it happened, you know? Like, <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, they get these telescopes, they, they network them together with atomic clocks. I'm like, really? That's pretty extraordinary. That's interesting. <laughs> um, but, but the thing is, I, there is ownership. The reason people are excited about this, not just the, you know, theoretical physicists like Andy uh, or astronomers like me or theorists like Jana, but the public is interested because there's ownership of it. Uh, it because you have this thing that was in, invisible, and we made it visible. We didn't know how to do it, but we figured it out. We made a telescope as big as the Earth through this cosmic coincidence. It's kind of like the eclipse. We feel like we're walking in the footsteps as a team that Eddington walked in. Mm -hmm. I mean, he went to Principe, but also Sobral off the coast of Brazil. of Brazil to do this thing. And it was during wartime, but they found a way to nimbly sidestep all the issues that divide us. Including rain and cloud cover. And tornado warnings in New well, York City. I like City. rain and cloud cover. Yeah. I'm from Oregon, so I, I like that kind of stuff. But, but, but yeah, all, all the, like the, the politics that divide us, we stepped around that. And this technique that we use, we need telescopes around the world. So we, we relish working with all of our colleagues. Um, we love not paying attention to politics. And, and that was part of it. So I think that's why people responded to it. It was a, a collective effort. Mm -hmm. And we did something that people said probably couldn't be done. Mm -hmm. I, I like to get to the point of a talk where I call it the hard stuff. So brace yourselves. <laughs> this was not the hard stuff yet. But before I do that, I really just want to give a round of applause for this beautiful image. But I, 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 I want to, yeah. it's really important to, to understand this, this is the collective effort of many people. This is, uh, mm -hmm. you really do need a global team to pull this off. And I think that's why some people discuss that big collaborations should get the Nobel Peace Prize. 
as well as a Nobel Physics Prize, right? That there is a sense in which it, it is really a gesture of, and, and that is a lot of what happened in the wake of Eddington's um, expedition, was that it was, it was sort of unifying. The world was a little bit less divided afterwards.